Welcome to Smart Living Software Training, Getting Started and Module Setup. Here is what we will cover in this session. To set up a new connection to a newly installed or existing system, first ensure all hardware is installed and addressed. Place the system in maintenance mode, then open up the Smart League software and create a new solution, selecting the Smart Living panel that has been installed. Next, enter the installation code to connect to the system. Select the Smart Living system configuration tree and then enter the install code in the field provided. The default is 9999. Ensure the correct connection method is selected for the system by going into application data. Select the System Layout tab and then Upload to upload all modules installed on the system. Optionally, select Receive All to upload all data from the panel, which will update software information. Once the upload has completed, note the hardware that has been loaded from the panel and ensure all hardware has been detected. System Layout will now show hardware available for expansion. Be sure to save the solution as you continue. Any changes made in software must now be sent to the system. You can pre-program a system using the software without actually being connected. First create a new solution or open an existing solution and in the System Layout tab, simply double click to add hardware devices to the solution. Continue programming and when connecting to the system, be sure to send the data from the software. It is possible to reset sections of the panel using the software, such as lost user codes, back to their factory default without affecting other sections of the panel. Create a new account, select the global send option, and then select only what you wish to default. Click send to control. The selected options will be reset to the default values without affecting the rest of the system. Installed hardware modules such as keypads and expanders are automatically detected by the software when uploading from a system. When pre-programming is required, it is important to select the correct type and address for the modules. If any modules type or address changes on the system, place the system in maintenance mode and then receive the system layout to update the software. Once modules are added to your solution, you can then select them to adjust programming. Select the keypads tree to change global options for the keypads. Wrong pin keypad lockout will lock keypads after three failed attempts to enter a code. View open zones displays unsealed zones at the top of the keypad, and the view scenarios replaces the multi-partition arming status with a single arming scenario. The message repetitions option is for touchscreen keypads and adjusts how many times a voice message is played. When selecting a keypad to program, there are two different types of keypads to select. A display keypad, which is the LCD, or a touch keypad, which covers the 4 and 7 inch alien touchscreens. Assign a description to the keypad and select the partitions the keypad belongs to. The advanced section for LCD keypads sets up the global function keys for the keypad. Each shortcut has an assigned icon, which is set using the shortcuts menu under the system configuration tree. To configure a key, simply select the type of shortcut and then select the shortcut parameter, then set if a code is required to operate the function. The advanced section for touchscreen keypads sets the available arming scenarios for the keypad. Touchscreen keypads do not have function keys, so no other options are available to select. The Alien Graphics tab allows custom skin files to be sent to the keypad. This requires direct connection to a keypad via the keypad's USB port. Selecting the Proximity Key Readers tree allows programming of reader addresses. Opening the address LED codes allows you to select a reader's address and see the LED feedback that will be required. Pressing the Proximity Reader Address Configuration button will put all card readers into address setting mode. Use an EM format card or tag to change reader addresses by badging the card against the reader to change the LED feedback. Click the End Proximity Reader Address button when done. 
card readers use the internal buzzer to indicate entry exit delay and alarm events. Setting the reader buzzer off option will disable this feature. Selecting a reader allows programming of the description, partition assignment and the four reader functions. If a reader must perform an arm disarm scenario for multiple areas, it must be mapped to all required partitions. To program a reader function for one of the LEDs, select the type such as arm disarm or operate an output and then select the assignment such as the scenario or the output number. To operate multiple functions, the user holds their card or fob at the reader until the coloured LED is displayed and then removes the card to trigger the function. Flex.io modules allow a description to be assigned for identification. There are no additional configuration options as terminals are programmed under the terminal section. The sounders tree allows testing of the IV programmable siren sounders and configuration of the siren patterns. To configure siren patterns, select a pattern event and then choose the tone and flash mode. Click the top test button to test this pattern using the PC speakers. Click the bottom test button to test the sounder itself. Selecting an installed sounder from the tree allows real-time monitoring and configuration of the siren faults and sensors. Programming of the sounders is covered in another module. Selecting the Nexus module allows configuration of the GSM module, SMS messages for remote control and remote commands. This is covered in another training module. Selecting the Smart Living System Configuration tree allows global options for the system to be programmed. All system programming is contained under this programming tree. Here we can program the installation code for the system. Next we can set the date and time of the system either manually or from the PC's time. Periodic event timers are timers that run on a continuous loop. Periodic event timer 1 is used to trigger dialer tests. The Control Panel Parameters tab allows setting of common system parameters. The iBus Parameters tab allows the data bus speed to be changed and allows the mains fail and battery fail delays to be set. The telephone options allow the incoming and outgoing volumes to be set and should not be changed from the factory default settings. The 50131 Parameters tab allows system fault and status messages to be disabled to conform to certain security requirements. The Force Arming Faults tab allows the system to be force armed if any of the selected faults are current on the system. The IP Connection Test Parameters tab allows testing for IP monitoring.